Welcome back to another Space News Summary with me. Every single week we take a look back on all the latest Starship developments, launch news and updates from across the spaceflight industry, and then take a look at what launch is coming up over the next seven days. And today we've got lots of things to discuss, from SpaceX's Starship in crisis with potential bankruptcy becoming a possibility, Rocket Lab has revealed huge news about their upcoming Neutron vehicle, and Roscosmos prepares to launch two tourists and a cosmonaut to the International Space Station for a short 12-day vacation. This and more to come, but let's kick off the video, as always, with all the latest Starship updates. Starship development has seen lots of ups and downs this week. One key thing that we saw was just how close to completion Ship 20's heat shielding is. This fantastic shot here shows an almost completely tile-clad belly, and I must say it looks absolutely stunning. We had hoped to see the Beast conduct another static fire as well last week, but unfortunately both attempts made ended in scrub, so hopefully SpaceX can iron out any imperfections and we'll see a successful attempt at some point this week. Stage 0 is coming along very nicely as well, with works continuing on the orbital launch pad and the tower and the catch arms. But soon it won't be the only Stage 0 we'll be able to see. Elon tweeted on the 3rd of December that the construction of a Starship orbital launch pad at Cape Canaveral has begun. Now one can assume that this will look broadly similar to the launch pad at Boca Chica, complete with tower and catch arms. An interesting question though will be how SpaceX plan on transporting Starship from Boca Chica to Cape Canaveral. It's far too large to travel by road like Falcon 9. A couple of theories include horizontal transportation on a barge, like the SLS core stage, or transportation on a barge vertically, similar to a recovered Falcon 9 first stage. There is, of course, the possibility that SpaceX will simply launch the rocket from Boca Chica and then have it land at Cape Canaveral via the catch arm system, though I would have thought this option might be a little bit far-fetched. By the way, let me play that clip of the booster being caught again. What you're watching now is a brand new animation from Seabass Productions of what a Starship booster catch might look like, and like all his other works, it looks absolutely incredible. I highly recommend clicking the card on screen for the full HD version with sound. Honestly, the sound design really elevates this animation so much. Anyway, I digress. The other, other alternative is that SpaceX builds Starship at the Cape itself. The vehicle assembly building is big enough to support the consecutive construction of multiple Saturn Vs. Here's a great picture of the rocket to give you a sense of scale. So it should be more than big enough to accommodate SLS and Starship. And if they did do this, then it's not impossible that we might get a real life version of this awesome artwork by James Vaughan. This has been my wallpaper for a while now and I love it. So yes, last week Elon shared with us that the construction of the Cape Canaveral launch pad is underway, but it's not the only news that we learned from Elon last week. The other thing is not quite as positive. We had some slightly concerning news regarding the Raptor engine, that its production is supposedly in crisis, according to an email sent by Elon Musk to all SpaceX employees. Here's the whole thing on screen. You can see it reads that the so-called Raptor crisis is much worse than it had initially seemed, and it implies that issues were covered up by senior management who recently left the company, leaving everyone else to realise the scale of the issue and then to pick up the pieces. The senior manager that the email is likely referring to is former Vice President of Propulsion Will Heltsley, who reportedly left SpaceX due to lack of progress with Raptor production. Furthermore, both the SpaceX Vice President of Mission and Launch Operations and a Senior Director of Mission and Launch Operations have both departed the company as well. The email continues on to urge all employees to work over the weekends to recover from the so-called disaster, and that this could potentially cripple the Starship program and Starlink version 2, the next generation of Starlink satellites that can't be launched on anything other than Starship due to the Falcon rockets having neither the volume nor mass to orbit required. The email wraps up with a statement that SpaceX faces a genuine risk of bankruptcy if it cannot achieve a Starship flight rate of at least once every two weeks in 2022. Now, that does seem like an insanely high launch cadence, because it is, but bear in mind that it's the goal to eventually reach this frequency of launches next year, even if that only means achieving it by December, and doesn't mean that SpaceX literally need to launch 26 Starships over the course of 2022. Also, with pad construction underway at Cape Canaveral, not every single launch would necessarily need to be from Boca Chica. Elon tweeted out a render from Eric last week, expressing that SpaceX want to build a second launch platform at Boca Chica 2, and I recall that when Eric first posted this render, Elon replied saying that the goal was for this to become a reality by 2022, further helping SpaceX reach the bi-weekly launch cadence. And of course, there's the oil rig launch platforms that could potentially be brought to operation at some point next year as well. 
Elon responded to some people on Twitter when asked about the Raptor situation, replying to one user that it's getting fixed, and gave some reassurance that it would take quite a lot of worst case scenario circumstances for SpaceX to actually face bankruptcy, and that it's ultimately an unlikely outcome. And that's the big news, and that is probably the extent to which the public is going to hear about it, unless Elon ever spills the beans in an upcoming presentation or interview. But this does sound like, even if Elon is exaggerating the issue a bit, that this could be the biggest crisis that SpaceX has faced with Starship so far. It also possibly shed some light on the somewhat cryptic Starship is a hard problem tweet that Elon made back in October in response to a NASA spaceflight photo of a Raptor engine. It's also worth remembering that what we've seen from Boca Chica has been nothing short of amazing so far. I mean, look at what the build site looked like in just 2019 when thinking about how far we've come, and there is a very good reason why a fully reusable rocket system has never been achieved or even really properly attempted before. And Starship isn't just the world's only reusable rocket, but it also also happens to be the biggest, most powerful, and quite probably the most complex rocket ever constructed as well. One take home from this email is Elon seemingly pinning the blame on the former senior management. This is one area that I am near certain we will never know the true details on, however, I very much doubt that they were sweeping known problems under the rug, as Elon seems to be suggesting in the email. And bear in mind that there is always the possibility that this unknown departed party was trying to make Elon aware of the problems with Raptor, but were constantly being handed unrealistic or impossible deadlines, and they may have eventually elected to leave the company due to dissatisfaction that the issues they'd raised weren't being addressed, and didn't want their reputation tarnished when the magnitude of the issue became apparent, and this email is now Elon reacting to the fact that the departed manager had been right about the Raptor production issues and is now trying to shift blame. See, we can speculate to the moon and Mars and back about what actually happened at SpaceX's Raptor production, and like I say, we will probably never really know the whole truth. I just hope that, whatever the problem is, SpaceX can overcome and fix the issues. And if you disagree, then too bad, because I can't see your dislikes anymore, haha. <laughs> But for real, YouTube, please, please bring these back. Yeah. Anyway, to quickly cover the other happenings at Starbase, Booster 5 is now complete, sounds the Raptor engines, of course. The wide bay continues to be built, and we've now seen the first side panels mounted to the frame. And then we also got a great new animation from Eric and small stars of the Starship being caught by the Mechazilla arms. Wow, between this and Seabass Productions, this week has been great for Starship renders. Click that card on screen for links to both. Go drop them a like and subscribe. And hey, if you're enjoying the ride so far then I always appreciate a like on this video here, it really helps me to stay afloat and I always do appreciate it. The final thing to mention is that Nick and Sweeney caught this shot of a big load spreader being delivered to Booster 4. This is used to lift boosters with the cranes, so it's a sign that SpaceX might be planning on lifting Booster 4 back into the orbital launch mount very soon, if they haven't already done so of course. They can move so fast that it's difficult to ensure that these videos are still correct by the time they're uploaded. Anyway, I'm wrapping up my Starship coverage there, but it's not the only developmental rocket that we learned stuff about about last week. Let's take a look at what else we saw. Yes, you all know what I was talking about just then. We had a big new announcement from Peter Beck, CEO of Rocket Lab, about the company's upcoming Neutron rocket. We first saw this announced a while ago, and back then it looked a bit like a stainless steel Falcon 9. Clearly though, lots of changes have been made since, and the rocket presented last week looks unlike anything else we've ever really seen before. At face value, it's similar to Falcon 9, a reusable first stage and expendable upper stage, but it has a lot of innovative features to separate it from Falcon. For starters, it's all carbon fibre, which, you know, among other things like good strength and low weight, is super cool looking. <laughs> Secondly, the fairing is actually integrated into the first stage and works a bit like a door, which opens up to allow the second stage to deploy and then closes again before re-entry. This obviously saves the faff of having to either catch the fairings from the air or fish them from the water, like SpaceX have done with Falcon 9, but also means that the second stage won't be exposed to the atmosphere, and by extension any aerodynamic forces and weather, meaning that the second stage can be made much more cheaply, considering it won't need to endure the harsh effects of the ascent. The other thing that makes Neutron very easily reusable is the landing legs, which appear to be permanently deployed, with no complex hydraulic extension system, which of course removes another potential point of failure. Rocket Lab seem to have set their sights high on making this rocket reusable, and I think if they pull this one off then it could be an absolute game changer. I'm looking forward to following the development of Neutron over the next few years. Now we had some news from NASA regarding the commercial crew program. As I'm sure you all remember, we were hoping to see Boeing Starliner crew vehicle launch earlier this year to the International Space station, but the flight was scrubbed due to an issue with the Starliner's valves. Well, the delay now seems to be extremely long, and I suspect there are more issues than just the valves. 
Last week, NASA announced that due to technical issues and the resulting delays experienced by Boeing, it is now expected that SpaceX will launch Crew 6 in March 2023 instead of Boeing. Really shows how the mighty have fallen here and that we're potentially years away from seeing Starliner actually carry astronauts anywhere. And speaking of delays, Tori Bruno, CEO of United Launch Alliance, announced that they won't be receiving Vulcan's BE-4 engines by Christmas and that Blue Origin won't be able to deliver them until 2022. Hopefully Blue Origin are nearly there though. They are supposedly in the final stages of testing and hopefully we're still on track to see the first Vulcan launch in 2022. We saw a couple of launches take place last week. The first was SpaceX's latest Starlink mission in which they delivered 48 more satellites to their Starlink constellation. Also inside to the fairing were two rideshare payloads, two Black Sky Earth observation satellites. The Falcon 9 first stage successfully landed 620 kilometers downrange on the drone ship a short fall of Gravitas, completing the ninth flight for this particular Falcon 9 booster. The other launch we saw last week was an Ariane space-operated Soyuz STB, launching from the French Guiana Space Center in South America. On board were two Galileo navigational satellites, which were both placed into a medium Earth orbit. Galileo is the European Union's fully civilian global navigation satellite system and is designed to act as a substitute in the event that either the USA's GPS or Russia's GLONASS navigation systems become unavailable to the general public for any reason. After last week's launch, Europe plans to launch a total of 10 more of these satellites. But that's all the news from last week that I wanted to discuss today. But wait, there's still lots of ground left to cover as there are a few interesting events happening over the next seven days. Let's take a look now. The first launch of the week should have taken place on the 5th of December, but sadly due to issues with ground support equipment, it's been pushed to today, actually, less than an hour after I plan on publishing this video, so there is every chance that it's already happened for you. This launch will be an Atlas V, carrying some satellites to geosynchronous Earth orbit. One of the mission's payloads will be the Space Test Program 3 mission. This includes the Space Test Program SAT-6 satellite with the National Nuclear Security Administration's Space and Atmosphere Burst Reporting System, NASA's Laser Communications Relay Demonstration, demonstration payload and six more secondary payloads for the US Air Force. Tomorrow, on the 7th of December, Rocket Lab will launch Electron Mission A Data with Destiny, and this is the third of four dedicated launches for Black Sky. On board will be two of Black Sky's observation satellites, Black Sky 14 and Black Sky 15. The next day, on the 8th of December, Roscosmos will be launching a space tourism mission from the Baikonur Cosmodrome. On board the Soyuz 2.1A will be two space tourists and one cosmonaut who will be heading to the International Space Station for a 12-day mission. Next up, on the 9th, SpaceX will be launching the IXP X-ray Astronomy Satellite under NASA's Small Explorer program. The satellite is a joint venture by NASA and ASI, the Italian space agency. The final launch of the week will be on the 12th of December and will be a Proton-M rocket launching from Baikonur. On on board will be two Express AMU satellites, both of which are used for communications, and they'll both be placed into a geosynchronous Earth orbit. And that's it! That's all the launches we're expecting to see this week, which, as I'm sure you can tell, means that we've got a very busy week of launch news to look forward to. Be sure to tune in next Monday so we can recap all of the missions and can hopefully talk about what a success they all were. But that's it for today's space news summary. Wow, it actually turned out to be quite a long episode, didn't it? On screen is now a scrolling list of all my fantastic Patreon supporters who really help make what I do here possible. And of course, big thanks to all my channel members as well who get these videos one day early. If you want to join the Lounge Squad, you can hit the button below the video to get some exclusive emojis and a badge of honor next to your name in the comments so that everyone knows that you're just better than them. Anyway, there are two more videos from my channel on screen. Hopefully they're both good picks for you. And that's all from me. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Next time.